Well, right now our members are dealing with uh, security. Security is one of the top issues in the technology world today. And uh, we're also dealing with uh, mobility, which is a related issue to security. Folks want to be able to access state government today on their mobile devices and, and, uh, and their pads. So we're dealing with that as well. Um, we're also dealing with um, the uh, silver tsunami, as they call it. A lot of folks in state government are eligible for retirement in the next three to five years. So uh, that wave is going to take a lot of technology, technology knowledge with it. So we're dealing with that issue as well. Well, state governments today are getting very creative uh, in taking some of the private sector workforce techniques. Uh, they are actively recruiting today, whereas they didn't do as much of that in the past. They're also taking a look at their uh, civil service requirements and trying to modernize those. Many of those were created 50 years ago or more and really don't fit the hiring needs of a 21st century workforce. So that's, a, that's something that is being uh, looked at very closely today as well. Well, managed services is a big issue. Uh, many state governments today are looking to the private sector for partnerships to deliver on those, um, in those areas where they don't really have the talent uh, to, to deliver those services. So we're seeing a, a transition to private sector uh, managed contracts and uh, the, the skills it requires to uh, work with those vendors. I think most of the changes I'm seeing are positive changes. Uh, state government's really taking a very serious look at becoming more efficient and more productive in providing services to the citizens and taxpayers. And they're implementing technology in much smarter ways uh, than they have in the past. And uh, as, as I mentioned before, they're not really afraid now to, to take a closer look at outside partnerships and to use technology such as cloud-based technology for a lot of the uh, operations that they have. We are looking to use social media more now as a communications vehicle uh, with our members. Uh, we employ Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, use that quite frequently today. We're also using uh, webinars to educate our members and to share issues and collaborate. Uh, we try to do a quarterly webinar right now on a topic of significant interest. Well, we hold five meetings per year. We do four regional seminars and then an annual conference, usually in August. Uh, those are very, very well attended. Um, we are really trying to work harder to uh, make our webinars available to our members, get more participation there. And uh, we also have uh, very robust e-groups on our website, and we're trying to encourage more of our members to use those. Right now, we have about 660 state representatives involved with our association, and we're trying to reach out to every one of those to get them involved with us. I think I would tell them that uh, you need to get involved as quickly as you can. Uh, go to the listserv, uh, put a question out there uh, that you need information on from a colleague from around the country, and uh, also, if possible, to attend one of the regional seminars. Uh, the state reporting there is, is excellent. Well, the, the NASIO group is very good at the strategic and policy side of state IT governance. And uh, our group is more focused on operations. So the two groups really work hand in hand. One could not be successful without the other. So it's great that these two groups get together and share their knowledge, get a better understanding of their challenges.